In this video, we're going to learn how to read config files in Python using the built-in config parser module. So a very common config file format is what's called an any file. An any file consists of key value pairs defined underneath sections. So for example, we could have a log section in between these square brackets here. Then we could define keys and values underneath this log section. So for example, we could have log file name as a key is equal to the value log.txt. We can have multiple key value pairs in a section. So for example, we could have logging on is equal to true. We could also have multiple sections. So we could have a database section. And maybe in this section, we'll have server is equal to 192. Dot o, dot two, dot six two, and we'll have username is equal to admin and password is equal to test123 and maybe we'll have port is equal to 3306. Any files can also contain comments by beginning a line with a semicolon. So for example, we could have here semicolon and then last modified 1 May 2023 by Kevin Brown and that's a comment. It's just there to describe the document. It doesn't actually contain any configuration data itself. So the idea with these any files is that each section contains a set of related configuration data for an application. Now it's very common to see config files used in production applications. So Python gives us this built-in config parser module we can use to easily read and access the values in config files like this. So we'll save this. And then over here, we'll import the config parser module with from config parser, import config parser. So the config parser class is what we're going to use to actually read the config file. We'll create a config parser object instance with config is equal to config parser. We can then read and parse the config file using the read method. So we'll have config dot read, and we'll pass it a string containing our config file name. So we'll have settings dot any. We can then use the config parser object, much like a dictionary to access the config file values. So for example, we could have config and then inside square brackets, the string log, and then inside square brackets, the string log underscore file name. This is going to give us this config value here the log file name underneath the log section. We'll try it out. So over here, we'll print this out with print. We'll save our program and we'll try it out. And we get log.txt, which matches the config file value. We could read values in the database section, such as the server here, by using the same syntax. So we'll have config and then database and then server. And we'll print this out. So we'll have print and we'll output this as well. So if we save our program and run it, we now get the server config value there. If there's a problem with the format of the config file, so for example, maybe we forget the close bracket here, the read method is going to raise an exception. So if we save this and try it again, we'll then get this exception here. We could handle this situation using try and accept. So we could have try colon and then accept colon. And inside this accept block, we could output an error message and exit the program. So we could have print and then settings dot any format error. And we could use raise system exit to stop the program. If we then save the program and try it out, we'll now get settings dot any format error because we're now using try and accept to recognize the exception has occurred and handle it. We could fix our settings.any file format. We could also use the in keyword to check if a key is in a section. So we can make sure a key like username or server is in the database section. We'll save this. And then over here, we'll have if username is in config database, which it is, 
then we'll put here username exists. We'll save our program and try it out. And we do get username exists. We can also use the get method to access config file values. So for example, we could have here config.get and we'll have database as the first argument, the section, and password as the second argument, the key. We'll output this using print. And if we save our program and try it out, we get test123, which is correct. We can access a list of sections in the config file using the sections method. So we could have here config.sections. And if we output this using print and save our program and try it out, we get the config file sections log and database in a list. We can access the keys in a section using the options method. So we could have here config.options. And if we pass it the string database, this is going to give us back a list of the keys in the database section. So we'll output this with print. And if we save our program and try it out, we get back the database section keys, server, port, username, and password. Now, if we access values in the config file, by default, they're going to be strings. So even though this looks like an integer, by default, it's going to be given to us as a string. So for example, if here we had print and then type and config database port, we'll find by default this value here is actually a string. So we'll save our program and try it out. And the type function here shows us this config value is actually given to us as a string. Now we could use int to manually convert this to an int. We could have here port is equal to int and then config with database and port. And int is going to manually convert this value to an int. We could then output port and the type of port. We could have print and then port and the type of port. And if we save the program and run it, we get 3306 and we see the type is now int. There's also built in get int, get float, and get boolean methods we can use to access the config file values as ints, floats, and booleans. So, for example, we could have here port is equal to config dot get int and we'll have database and we'll have port. Then we'll comment this out and here we'll again output the port and the type of port. So we'll have print and then port and we'll also output the type of port. And if we save the program and try it out, we see that port is 3306 and the type is int. Now when using the get methods, we can supply an optional fallback argument. And if the config file key is not present, then that optional fallback argument will be used. So for example, let's say that port is not in our config file. We'll use a comment here to comment it out. We'll save our config file. And then over here, we'll add fallback is equal to seven. If we save the program and run it, we now get that port is set to the fallback value seven because port was not actually in the config file. There's also a get float method that works basically the same as get int. And there's also the get boolean method, which is going to return true or false. So for example, we could have here if config dot get boolean and we'll have log as the section and logging on as the key. If this is true, we'll put here print and then logging on. Otherwise, we'll have else and we'll put here logging off. Now, right now for logging on, we have true. 
So we'll test it out. We'll save our program and run it. And we get here logging on. We could have here false, all lowercase. And if we save this and run the program, we'll now get logging off. So there's actually a number of case insensitive values that config parser is going to interpret as true or false. So we could have true or false. We could also have yes or no. We could have on or off, or we could have one or zero. So for example, we could have here, yes. And if we save the program and try it out, we'll get here logging on. We could also have here, no. And if we save the program and try it out, we'll now get logging off. Now the format of any files is pretty informal, which means some any files may include or allow for things which other any files do not. So for example, some any files allow us to use pound to make a comment. So for example, we could have here pound use IP address in case name resolution broken. And this would also be a comment. One common thing to see in any files is values which reference other values. So for example, we could have here home is equal to slash app. And then we could have a log dir key whose value uses home. So we could have dollar sign and then inside curly braces the key home. This would give us the value slash app here, and we could add to it with slash logs. We could actually interpret this using the config parser. If we save this over here, what we'll do is also import the extended interpolation class. So we'll now have import config parser, and we'll have comma, and we'll have extended interpolation here. And then we'll have a close bracket. Then when creating our config parser object, we'll now have here interpolation is equal to, and we'll have extended interpolation here to create the object instance and pass it as an argument to the constructor. When we do this, it will allow config parser to read values like that, which reference other values. So for example, down here, we could then have, let's say print, and we'll have config with log and log underscore dir. We'll save this and try program out. And now we get slash app slash logs. It's possible for a value to reference a value in another section and config parser will support this. So for example, we could have here underneath database, let's say archive dir is equal to, we'll have dollar sign, and then in the curly braces, log the section, colon home, the key, and then slash archive. And we could save this. And then over here, we could have, let's say print and config with database, and we'll have archive dir. And if we save this and run the program, we'll get here slash app slash archive. So this is how we can read a config file using the config parser module in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.